What's going on guys and welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions, a channel where we take fun what if life scenarios and make them far too real. For this list, we'll be taking a look at some mythological creatures and evidence that are said to still exist that are possibly descendants or proof of dinosaurs. That's right, grab your toothbrush, Ross Geller, because we're digging for answers. I'm your host, Taylor McWaters, and here are the top 10 things that prove dinosaurs still exist. Let's get weird. Kicking off the list at number 10, the Elasmosaurus. This long-necked boy was first discovered in 1868. Shortly after the Civil War ended, a military doctor in Kansas found this fossil, probably threw up, and then passed it along to the American paleontologist Edward Drinker Cope, who named it the plesiosaur. Its neck contains 71 vertebrae, which is 11 more than anything we've seen, so it doesn't matter how it slept, you know that neck hurt the next day. The next day it's like, well, oh, I slept funny again. Its long neck was helpful for those deep dives this thing did need to breathe while it was lurking underwater. It's a giant snorkel, basically. Just two years ago, scientists have unearthed the largest known elasmosaur. This thing has been sitting there since the Cretaceous period, so who knows what else is waiting for us. And before we continue with this list, if you want to go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, it pays for all of our dinosaur gear to discover the Antarctica. So please give us thumbs up and help us out so we can help you bring some info. Thanks so much. Back to this list. Number nine, the Kidos Troia. Also known as the Trojan Cetus, or Monster of Troy, which I personally like a little bit better. It was a giant sea creature dragon sent by Poseidon himself to wipe out the land of Troy. How lovely. The king, Lamadon, refused to pay for buildings, so a sea dragon was sent to collect. Okay, times were rough back then, I guess. The only way to calm the beast was to sacrifice the king's daughter. Okay, I bet if she knew math, she'd be considered a witch anyway, so honestly, it doesn't even matter at this point. There's a painting of this thing on a vase from the 6th century. That's like the only evidence we have of it, but we now believe what they may have seen. Perhaps Poseidon didn't send this monster to collect tax money, but maybe they saw the Samotherium. The Samotherium is a prehistoric giraffe from the Xenozoic Age. The creator of the vase most likely found a fossil, which is much more fun than finding Poseidon's water horse, I think, and much more safe. Number eight, Siren. Coming straight from Greek mythology, sirens were half bird, half woman hybrids, and they were said to trick sailors and lure them out into harsh waters in peril. The top half is a human, bottom half is a bird, kind of like a mermaid, but with more owl, I guess. According to mythology, there were two of these things that would hang out on an island in the western sea near the rocks of Scylla. Rumor has it, these were indeed the daughters of the sea god Phorcys or the river god Aculus. Either or sounds like bad news. In Homer's Odyssey, we can find some hot tips on how to avoid hearing their forbidden songs. Yeah, you thought seagulls were loud and annoying. Huh, buckle up. They had power behind their notes, so much so that in Homer's Odyssey, book 12, Odysseus was advised by Circe to put wax in their crew's ears so you don't hear them singing and then go mad. Odysseus wanted to hear the song so bad. Back in the day, they didn't have Spotify, so you heard someone whistle and you're like, oh my god, that's amazing, what is that? It was like live music. He of course wanted to hear it, but he tied himself to the ship to avoid steering the ship into annihilation. Fair. Mythological folklore or human dinosaur hybrid descendant with vocal cords of doom. Who knows? We almost saw something like this in the abandoned Jurassic Park four pitch years ago. They would have came out and just screamed at you and you would have just left the theater. Number seven, the Kraken. With most of the ocean still undiscovered, so many dinosaurs could just be lurking and waiting at the bottom. We have no idea. We discover some crazy new fish every other week, so it's just a matter of time, really. When thinking about the Kraken, some may think of the beast from a fantasy film about pirates, and that's great. We love that. The Kraken, though, originated from Nordic folklore. These ships would just simply disappear out of nowhere and tales of a giant squid monster would often be the culprit. The first time we heard about this thing was back in 1180, but in reality, this thing is probably a older giant squid. There's also something called a colossal squid too, so, which as you can guess, is obviously even bigger. So who knows, this thing could trace back and be bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger with every million years. These live deep in the waters of Antarctica. These could for sure be descendants of dinosaurs, well, survivors, rather. The only places humans can't reach just happens to be home of these big, beautiful aquatic behemoths. What a coincidence, eh? Odd. Number six, Megalodon. Another beast lurking deep below. Let's keep this thalassophobia train rolling. The Megalodon is a big ass shark. You know this. A shark that, like dinosaurs, went extinct many moons ago. It was said to weigh about 50 tons on average, spanning 18 meters in length. Unlike any other fascinating creature, sharks can't leave behind fossils because, well, they have no bones. I guarantee you one person watching is like, really? Yeah, no bones. 
just like gums, just like violent gums. So all we have left to study are their teeth. Their teeth were pretty intimidating also. Being able to say that the Megalodon once existed is a smooth transition into talking about the Mosasaurus. We saw this thing in Jurassic World in some Sea World like exhibit and the Mosasaurus existed back in the Mesozoic era just a mere 70 million years ago. Back then though these things did have bones and in 1764 skull fragments were found in St. Petersburg. Later on in 2012 a full skeleton was found in the same quarry. Dinosaurs are real, confirmed, pass it on. Number five. The Rock. Although Dwayne Johnson is probably as strong as a dinosaur, I'm not referring to that rock. This rock was a massive bird of prey that would take your children a bit more violent. It was so large that it would carry a full-size elephant back home. I once saw a pigeon flying with a mouse downtown, so that's like the modern version of this. Much less fun, much more gross. The Rock was featured in four Arabian night stories, one of which involved Sinbad the sailor. He claims that the giant bird carried him to safety after a shipwreck, safely to the giant nest, that is. See, Sinbad was able to escape this nest by tying himself to the rock's leg, where he then flew so high he could no longer see the earth. That's pretty damn high. The rock seems to be a descendant of the elephant bird from Madagascar, the Epirinus. It went extinct in the 16th century, so maybe this ancient bird just happened to carry off Abraham like he was a New York rat. Times were crazy back then. The siren would call sailors over, the kraken would sink the ship, and the rock would carry survivors back to their 500 foot condo of a nest. I never wanted to live in that. Like, I, whoever lived in this time, you didn't make it. You didn't make it past two days. I'm so glad that I live now, like alive now. Back then, I would be the first to go. A bird would just pluck me out of the water, I'd be gone. Number four, the bunyip. Shooting on over to the Australian outback, the bunyip lurked in swamps, creeks, basically any calm place where you would normally catch a frog. This beast would just jump on out and surprise you. It's quite fascinating. It had a round head, this long neck, and the body of an ox or a hippo. Just a big old body. Now these things could have been descendants from the giant Diprotodon or giant wombat. Giant wombat sounds a lot more fun. So ages ago, we think aboriginals discovered one of these or bones from one of these and naturally the tail of the bunyip was soon carried along. Researchers have said that they also could have seen the Zygomaturus, which was this hippo-like creature that roamed the land 12,000 years ago. So it could have been anything. There's a link there. Round head, long neck. I was getting worried there for a second. Could this be my long lost uncle? Number three, Loch Ness Monster. I remember when I was younger, I would ground pound this thing's head to get a star. Since I was that young, I always had this idea that the Loch Ness Monster was real. Maybe it was Mario, maybe it was my drunk Scottish uncle convincing me that it was real when I was six, I, I don't know. The legend dates back to the sixth century in the life of St. Columbia written by Adamnon. And according to the ancient author, a monster had appeared in the Loch Ness area. Irish monk St. Columbia was also in the area centuries later when he came across locals burying a man by the river Ness. Apparently he was swimming in the river when a water beast attacked him and then of course no longer alive. Could this have been just a descendant from the Plesiosaurus? Full skeletons were discovered in England and the description is pretty uncanny so mm, dinosaurs. Thousands of years down the road someone will be doing a top 10 list and be like did giraffes exist? Did they swim in lakes? Look at these necks. I mean these things for sure existed it's just you know different centuries. They were much bigger and more menacing. Number two, dragons. Okay, we're getting close to the end of this list, so the ideas are now going to get a little bit more daring, if I can say that. Dragons. Okay, we've seen Khaleesi lay waste to an entire town riding one of these things. Donkey married and had dragon, donkey babies, and Shrek. Did these things once exist? Where do these come from? When folklore and fossils combine, history can get a little confusing. Millions of years ago, a flying reptile called a pterosaurus roamed the skies. It's now the closest thing we have to a real life dragon. A jaw fossil was analyzed after it was discovered in 2011, and scientists can now say that its wingspan was the length of a school bus. It was a skull attached to a long neck, bolted onto a pair of wings, said researcher Tim Richards. We know pterodactyls were real, so maybe this is possibly the family member in between dinos and dragons. What do you guys think? And finally, number one, unicorns. Yeah, I left unicorns last because they're unicorns. A horse with a horn on its head doesn't sound that far-fetched in terms of evolution after what we've heard on this list. It had appeared in ancient myths of India and China with the earliest description coming from Greek literature. It was described as a white horse with a purple head, blue eyes, and a long horn with a 
red tip. Perhaps these accounts were sightings of the Elasmotherium. These things were roaming around 10,000 years ago and it looked pretty similar all things considered. Because that was described as a hairy long horned rhinoceros ancestor that roamed the lands of Eurasia. So maybe the sun was hitting this beast just right and it looked quite, you know, majestical. One Chinese scroll described such a creature as a deer's body, a cow's tail, a sheep's head, horse legs, and a big horn. Skinny rhino or magical steed, you be the judge. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Those were 10 things that just may very well prove that dinosaurs are still roaming out there. But before you head out, drop us some comments down below. Let us know any lists you wish to see in the future. Or you know what, just tell us some deep dark secrets. We don't care, we just love hearing from you guys. I'm Taylor McWaters, keep on being you, and we'll see you next time on Life's Biggest Questions. Peace.